Hello friends, it's Miss Emma back with another Tinkercad tutorial to brighten up your Tuesday. I have been really impressed with the work and creativity that I've seen so far on your Tinkercad projects, which is really exciting. I'm looking forward to giving you a couple of new tools in these upcoming videos to take that to the next level, and hopefully you have been getting some ideas for future designs that you want to do as well. In today's video, I'm going to be introducing you to a new tool called Smart Duplicate and then giving you a couple of quick practice projects to help you get the hang of it. Once you've done that, we will move on to another video to help you utilize that and we'll be continuing to make some really cool complex projects without having to spend a lot of time creating patterns and such. So I have gone ahead and opened up my Tinkercad work plane, named this project Smart Duplicate because that's what this video is going to be all about. And let me just give you a quick demo and introduction to what Smart Duplicate is. So Smart Duplicate essentially takes copy and paste commands to the next level. Instead of having to take out a repeating shape and move it wherever you want it to be, Smart Duplicate basically has a short-term memory to remember a repeating movement that you want to repeat all the way around your design or around your screen. So as an example of when Smart Duplicate would be helpful, say I wanted a row of cylinders down my screen. Using copy and paste, I'd be able to drag one cylinder out, copy it, paste it, and then drag that pasted object to wherever I wanted my next column to be. Then I could paste again, but each time I have to relocate this pasted cylinder to be where I want it to be in the row. Using Smart Duplicate, I can save myself some time by having it remember how much I want these cylinders to move in between each command. So using the Smart Duplicate command, I've copied it. It's going to remember this movement right here. And now when I press the Smart Duplicate command, it remembers how far away it was. This is going to be a lot more precise. It took me way less time and I got way more done. So we're going to go ahead and apply this to more complicated designs. So here is my first example and walkthrough of how to use Smart Duplicate. The first project I want you to try is making a spiral staircase. To start my spiral staircase, I'm going to go ahead and drag out a box and make it a little bit more rectangular and flatter like a stair step. And once I'm happy with that size, I'm going to go ahead and smart duplicate it. So instead of copying, I'm going to press Control D or Command D, and I will get a duplicated version of that shape right on top. Because I'm doing stair steps, I'm just going to go ahead and pick this duplicated shape up off the first one a little bit. And it's going to remember every movement that I do in between as long as it is still selected. So it's going to remember me picking this shape up in order to make it look like an actual stair step, especially a spiral staircase, I'm going to rotate it a little bit and then I need to push it back a little bit. And then your staircase will look different depending on how much you rotate and how far back you push. So let's say those are the movements I want it to remember for this pattern. So I lifted it up, I rotated it, I pushed it back. I have not clicked out at all during this time whatsoever. So you'll notice this top layer is still highlighted in light blue. That's what I want to see. Now I can press my smart duplicate command again. So I'm going to press command D and my other layer should stack. I could keep just pressing command D and it's going to keep duplicating that shift for me. I could do this a whole bunch so that it spirals a couple times around. And as long as I haven't clicked out of highlighting that top shape, this will still work. However, if I click out and this is no longer highlighted and I try to go back and press Command or Control D, nothing will happen. So if I zoom out to give you a little bit of a better view, I have a crazy spiral staircase. This same thing would work with a regular staircase. So let's say... I'll do another staircase, but I'll make it not spirals. Let's make it a different color. So I'm going to start with my shape. I'm going to duplicate that shape by doing Command-D. I'm going to lift up that shape. 
and then I need to push it back a little bit so I can actually see stair step. I still have it selected. I haven't clicked out at all. Now if I press Smart Duplicate Command D again, and I keep pressing it, that repeating shift just keeps getting stacked on top. And again, I don't want to click out from having that top layer highlighted until I know I'm all the way done. What you do need to know about Smart Duplicate is it doesn't automatically group all of this. So let's say my staircase was done. I'd want to go ahead and select all of it to duplicate because I don't want to end up messing up one of my steps along the way. All of them are highlighted. I can go ahead and group. And now this would go ahead and move as a whole. And I have a staircase. My suggestion is to try this a couple of times. It's okay if it doesn't work the first time. The biggest problem I see you guys have with this is remembering not to click out. So remember that top layer or whatever layer that you want to change should stay highlighted and make sure you're using Command D from the very beginning and not accidentally trying to copy it or paste it first. So I'm going to go ahead and take this to the next level. So once you've practiced that and gotten a staircase, and ideally a spiral staircase, again, you can get creative with how yours works based off of how big of a shift you make yours do. But I'm going to take it to the next level by showing you guys how to create a gear. And I'm going to do that on a brand new fresh work plane. So let's apply this to if I wanted a repeating shape around the outside of, say, a round object. So I'm going to make, be making a gear. I'm going to start with a cylinder base for the circle part of my gear. Make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to work with. I want it to be symmetrical. And for the teeth of my gear, I'm going to grab out another cylinder, but I'm going to make it nice and squished to look like a gear tooth. I'm going to go ahead and drag that in. So what you might be thinking to do based off of what we've done so far is to just shift it to the right or the left a little bit and maybe rotate it and then do that shift all the way around. You can do that, but let me show you what happens. I could go ahead, Command D to Smart Duplicate this, drag it over, and rotate it a little bit. And then if I Smart Duplicate this all the way around, what you'll notice is my shift is staying the same, but the amount that it's sticking into my circle base of the gear is not. And that's because based off of the commands that I gave the smart duplicate, it has no idea how big my base is. So unless I had just moved it over the perfect amount and rotated it the perfect amount, it's most likely not going to stay around this base perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and just clear this screen and start over and show you a better way so you don't have to struggle through finding that perfect shift to get it to fit around your gear. So again, I'm going to grab my cylinder make it a little squished tooth. Drag that into my cylinder. And I actually want to do one on each side of my gear. That way, something about this command gives Smart Duplicate an idea of how far apart the teeth should be around the gear. So I'm going to copy and paste so I'm not duplicating it. I just need a copy of it to be on the other side. I want it to be sticking out about the same amount as the other one. And then I want to align these exactly to the middle of each other. So I selected all three, grabbed my align tool, and I want them to be aligned perfectly. Now that they're aligned, I need to duplicate just the teeth. So I'm going to select just this tooth and just this tooth. So these two should be the only thing highlighted, not my gear base. Now I'm going to use my command D and I need to tell this how far to rotate. And I could always type in here if I want it closer together. And there we go. I haven't clicked out yet. This is still highlighted. So if I keep pressing command D, it repeats that shape all the way around. Plus, this saves me a little bit of time because I don't have to go in a full 360 since the other side is also duplicating along 
with that other one. Perfect. So now I have teeth that are evenly spaced, shift all the way around. I didn't have to spend the time copying and pasting and rotating every single one of those gear teeth out. I just need to add a hole in the middle of my gear. Before I do that though, I want to make sure I don't mess up any of these teeth. So I'm actually going to group all of it. Once that's grouped, I'm going to go ahead, bring out the hole. I want to align that to the middle as well as make it a little bit larger. So if I select both of these, align tool again, right to the middle, then I'm gonna regroup it and I have my completed gear. Your guys' might look different depending how large you made the teeth or how big of a rotate command you did in your smart duplicate, but I want to see your gears. And stay tuned for our next video where I show you how to apply this skill to a more fun seasonal project that you could potentially print out on a 3D printer. See you in the next video.